Hi friends, this is Sue Betty from the Bluebird Tavern in Burlington, Vermont. TEND, Exploring the Vermont Foodscape, is a series of video postcards from the many farmers, cheesemakers, brewers, bakers, and other businesses that supply our restaurant with incredible local ingredients. This is a story about how dozens of creative and hardworking people are making a living by producing truly excellent regional products. Oh yeah. Hi, this is Sue from Bluebird Tavern and I'm out here at Jericho Settlers Farm checking out what they do and uh, getting ready for summer. Spring and summer. Spring and summer. We're rocking it in the spring already. We uh, started small, you know, acre garden, 50 chickens, and now we're at 200 acres, most of which is grazing land, but, you know, 12 acres of vegetable production, um, a full herd of cattle, or a full herd of pigs, a thousand lane hens, a couple thousand meat birds, um, a flock of sheep and their lambs. So, yeah, we just took off and. Um, we do a year-round CSA, we do year-round production in the vegetable end of things, well, and meat and eggs too, of course, and um, we really love actually the off-season, what's called the off-season part of farming, um, like which is some of what you see here in this hoop house. And Yeah, so it's early uh, April, what do y'all have going on in here? Yep, yeah, so early April, we've got some stuff that overwintered, um, like some of these larger chards here and these Asian greens, lots of mustards and pak choys and things down here. Um, Let's go down and get a good look at it. Yep. And on the other side, we have some spinach that overwintered. And then a lot of the stuff that overwintered, we've already ripped out and we've replanted. We've got cutting lettuce here, um, all kinds of colors and shapes and textures. Uh, a lot of parsley and cilantro in here. We wholesale some herbs, so we do a lot of those, fresh herbs. Um, and, uh, you know, these Asian greens are nice. And lots of different colors and textures, and we actually uh, pick them as a braising green, sort of an adolescent stage here, and bunch them together, sell a mixed bunch of color. Um, really nice, like a quick saute or stir fry. A um, little spice to it, but in the spring, because the weather's not super hot, they don't get really hot and mustardy and like overwhelming. They just have a really rich flavor, it's really nice. Um, but yeah, we do all kinds of things. We're experimenting every year, trying new things, and that's part of the fun of farming it's nothing's ever the same from year to year <laughs> which makes it challenging but also a lot of fun the fact that we use a hoop house structure that you're in uh, with poultry the house that you're in had uh, chickens in it probably about 500 maybe two or three years ago mm -hmm. so they a lot of their fertility is still in here so what we'd like to try to do is rotate the chickens through various hoop houses every winter. So that way you can um, maybe break down some uh, vegetable pests, add some fertility to that house. Um, and it's not always vegetables, vegetables, vegetables in that hoop house year round. It gets, it gets broken up the, uh, the poultry. People come to your farm and support it or, you know, uh, businesses like Bluebird Tavern um, and other stores that buy our products uh, support us. There's that great reciprocal um, nature to it, and you know we go we go to the Bluebird to eat, or we go to other restaurants to eat. You know we purchase at the stores some foods that we, you know, like citrus that we don't grow here. Um, it's just it's a great feedback loop, and um, and the people that that purchase from our farm via CSAs, we get to see them all the time, and. In the summer months and their kids come out here and play and get to see the animals they get to learn about where their food comes from uh it's just a great feeling to, to have that i just feel like every day it's like okay i created something i helped i mean it's not like i'm creating these plants but i'm helping them become something that they won't in the wild and you know if we just forgot about domestication you know so it's like you know you're producing something that's healthy for people it's in a way that you know is going to be sustainable for the land in the long run and that's all you know it's a constant challenge it's like yeah sure we're not 100 percent sustainable we still rely on fossil fuels and things like that and it's like every year we try to get a little closer to that ideal model and um that's a good challenge i love that part of it and i love that we can provide something for the community that um you know is not there's not enough of yet in this world basically I mean, we're trying to show there's another way to do it. And when we first got into this, people would be like, oh, you want to farm? You're not going to make any money. Why do you want to farm? How are you going to live on farming? And it's like, you can do it. You definitely can do it. And I want to show that. It's like, farmers aren't these like, you know, people to be, you know, I don't know, sympathied over or whatever, because they have this hard lifestyle. It's like, 
no, we choose to do it. And yes, it's hard physical work and it's challenging like complexity to keep it all going. But, um, but you know, there's a lot of other jobs that are probably equally challenging that way, but it's just, uh, it's so real. It's so there in your face every day. And yeah, I feel good about it. So that's why I do it. <laughs> Oh my.